Hi friends and welcome to the Sammy Cohn Show. I'm so glad you're here because this month I'm sharing some of my favorite things, favorite places, and introducing you to one of my favorite people. That's right, we're starting off today's show by looking at some Father's Day gifts that yes, even the kids can afford because isn't that how it's supposed to be anyway? Plus, if parents and grandparents want to help, I'll give you some tips for that too. Then I'll be taking you to one of my favorite places in Nashville and anywhere for that matter, Soundways at Gaylord Opryland Resort, plus telling you how you can treat the kids like royalty this summer. Then I'm going to introduce you to the founder of Both Hands and share not only his incredible journey, but also how you and your family can help widows and orphans this summer. So call a friend, grab a chair, and get ready to be inspired like never before, because this is The Sammy Cohn Show. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is The Sammy Cohn Show, sponsored by Soundwaves at Gaylord Opryland. With Father's Day coming up next weekend, I wanted to give you some unique finds that you can use as gifts that your kids can actually buy, right? Novel idea, who would have thought? But I think it's just more genuine when your kids actually have a part in buying these gifts. So everything you see on this table for the most part is under $50, most of it's under $20. So let me start by giving you the ideas as well as an add-on. So if you want to help make it a bigger gift, whether it's you as a mom, grandparents, friends, I'm gonna give you those tips as well. We're going to start over here with the tactical pen. It's an eight in one tactical pen. It also has this carabiner or not a carabiner, a little um, bracelet that comes with it. It's about $20. You'll find it on Amazon. So there's plenty of time to get it along with everything else on the table. And it's just a fun tool. It's got a flashlight. It's got a screwdriver. Like I said, it's eight in one. Honestly, probably won't find a reason to use all eight items with it, but it's something that'll be fun for dad. And if you wanted to go to that next level, maybe plan a family camping, camping trip that you can do in addition, maybe later on this summer. The next gift, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Disney loving dad. Now these t-shirts are so fun and really dad might not pick them out for himself, but they're great to wear around the house to a, to a ball game. But I would love it if you guys would think of maybe planning a Disney trip and these would be great family t-shirts. Of course, the I am your father for the Star Wars fan, the Incredibles, uh, Simba over here, all iconic Disney movies represented in these shirts. Okay, moving to the center, we have the coffee mug for the coffee loving dad. Now, I think a coffee mug is an iconic Father's Day gift, but I love this one especially because it has a saying on it, dad, no matter how hard life gets, at least you don't have ugly children. Now, if you wanted to really increase the value of the gift, you could drop a Starbucks card in it. You could give dad a Keurig or something like that for his home coffee, but it's just a fun gift that I think any kid would love to give their dad. All right, sports loving dads, let's look at the Adidas slide. Again, these are about $20. You can find them on Amazon. And this is great, even if dad doesn't play sports anymore, these are super comfy. Now these are meant to wear after you get off the court or the field, so you don't ruin your actual shoes. But honestly, I wear my sons all the time around the house. They're fantastic. Okay, this guy is the Hamilton Beach breakfast sandwich maker. Now what you want to realize is that this is something that you can make instead of going through the drive through So you've got your English muffin or croissant, and then you put your egg, you can put your bacon or Canadian bacon, the bottom part of your sandwich, and this literally makes the perfect breakfast sandwich in about five minutes. I mean, for the dad on the go, who could think of anything better? And I've seen lots of people do really fun things with these on TikTok, um, on Instagram Reels. You can find all sorts of really fun recipes, but this is about $24.99 from Amazon, and it's gonna be a hit for the whole house. Finally, I want to direct your attention over to these bracelets. Now, this is for the stylish dad. This is a little more expensive. These are $68 from Kendra Scott. It's a new line called Scott Brothers. And what's great about these is that Kendra's been designing jewelry about as long as she's been a mom. And so her sons actually helped design this. And you know I love making your money stretch further. Kendra Scott is doing an amazing give back event June 16th and 17th for Love One. So if you wait until June 16th and 17th, you can head into the Green Hill store or even shop online. I'll put the code up on sammycone.com so that when you buy this gift, it can actually help benefit children in Haiti. So this is a really, again, $68. It's a little higher price point, but really a great price point for these beautiful beaded bracelets. And there's more in the line as well, but I just wanted to give you a sampling of what Scott Brothers is gonna be launching just in time for Father's Day. So this is just a sampling of everything that we have here. I'm gonna put the full list on sammycone.com 
Amazon.com. But you can see we run from about $9 until $68, and we've got things for every dad on your list. Head to SammyCone.com. We'll give you all those details now, and I hope you have a very happy Father's Day. I just finished sharing about some of my favorite Father's Day gifts that kids can afford, and so I know the next question I'm going to get asked is, but Sammy, my kids aren't old enough to work yet. How can they earn money? So who better to ask than my own kids? Kara's who's 16, Britton is 15, and even though they've both worked at Chick-fil-A for over a year and have even gotten additional jobs for this summer, they had some pretty creative ways of earning money before they were old enough to get hired. Karis, what did you do? I had my mom put on social media that I could do calligraphy and was good at hand lettering, so I addressed wedding invitations and made different posters. Yeah, and it made a lot of money. Britton, what about you? My, I had my mom put on a local neighborhood website that I could do yard work, just mow lawns, mulch, do stuff like that. Yeah, pull weeds. and mm -hmm. It's not always very glamorous, that's for sure, but when you're young enough and you've got enough you know, talent abilities, especially with social media right now, the key is to find something they're passionate about and that they can learn and find some people that are willing to give them a chance and you'll be surprised at how quickly word of mouth spreads. Summer is in full swing and it's time to make up for those lost memories and explore new possibilities. I couldn't think of a better place to do it than right here at Sound Waves at Gaylord Opryland Resort where the possibilities are endless. I'm taking you on a journey to discover my must-dos so you can fully embrace their summer of more. about making new memories with friends and family, one of my can't miss activities at Soundwaves is the Rock and Racer. You're going to grab a mat with friends and family, head to the top of the stairs, and twist and turn to race down to see who is the king or queen of the water slides. If you're looking for a little more adventure, I'm going to recommend the Beat Drop and the Bass Drop. Now, these are for the serious water slide aficionados because you're going to be standing at the start, but you're going to plunge into an adventure like you've never experienced. If you have little ones, you're going to want to make your way over to the Rising Stars stage here at Sound Waves. From fountains and slides, it's the perfect amount of fun and festivity for your kids. Plus, adults can lounge by the side and soak up the rays while getting in on the fun. This is definitely a can't miss for kids of all ages. Waves must do list would not be complete without mentioning the tidal track wave pool. This is the centerpiece of all of the outdoor attractions here at Sound Waves. And with the large screen behind me, the waves all around me, no trip to Sound Waves would be complete without it, where you can star in your own summer fun. land is one of those places that guests return to year after year and our family is no exception but with all we've been through in the past year I wanted to look at it with new eyes and discover some things that we haven't done before plus show off some of our family favorites and prove why this is truly an upscale experience Nestled away from the wave pool is the diamond pool here at the outdoor attraction of Sound Waves. This adults only 18 and older oasis is filled with calm and serenity. Now you know we love bringing our entire family to Sound Waves, but whether you've got your kids here or you're thinking about doing a couples only getaway, this is a place to come to relax and soak up the sun. You know I couldn't give you my personal guide to sound waves without talking about one of my favorite things, the food. Inspired by some of the most popular coastal destinations across the U.S. and your favorite fun in the sun summer getaways, the food is not to be missed. And honestly, it's not like any food that you'll find at any other water attraction. From my favorite lobster rolls to so much more, this is going to be a culinary adventure you wouldn't expect. 
At Opryland, the possibilities are endless. From all of these attractions that you see outside here at Soundways to all of the pirate and princess themed events that are happening inside of the resort. That's right, in addition to the airy atriums that we know and love, you can do some really one of a kind things this summer. Whether it's taking an honorary oath as a princess or pirate or experiencing the very new escape room, there's so much to see and do all in one place. possibilities are endless here at Gaylord Opryland Resort. Whether you're looking to chill, thrill, or have an entirely new royal adventure, you can book your summer of more at soundwaysgo.com. You've seen me introduce you to both hands for basically as long as this show has been going on, but now I have the distinct pleasure of introducing you to the man behind the ministry, my friend J.T. Olson. JT, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I love that we get to sit down. To, we, we, <laughs> we get to do a lot together. Our girls are friends. But yeah. you have such an amazing ministry. But there's a really interesting story that happened in your life. Can you give us just an insight into, you know, kind of how you grew up and what led you to start Both Hands? Well, uh, I guess it started, you know, uh, when I was doing a fundraiser mm -hmm. for an uh, organization in town, a golf fundraiser, where you yeah. mail letters out and you say, yeah. would you sponsor me while sure. I golf? And I had a friend uh, who sent my letter back to me, did not include a check. He just scribbled on my letter. He said, JT, if you told me you were working on a widow's house, I might sponsor you. But you're just golfing. Nice cause, but not my money. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> hurt my feelings a little bit, but I thought, you know, that's a good idea. Yeah. And, and the idea just never left me. Whenever I saw a 5K or a golf tournament after that, I kept thinking, if all those people were working on a widow's house, would it be more effect effective? Would it, mm -hmm. be, would it be better? Mm -hmm. I just couldn't figure it out until a couple years later, I'm in church running a good friend of mine, hadn't seen him in a couple months. I said, hey, Don, what's up? And he said, I'm adopting four kids from Moldova. And Don already has three kids at home. Wow. And I said, what happened? And he said, well, I was on a mission with Sweet Sleep delivering beds to orphanages in Moldova and, and uh, fell in love with this little boy, George. Mm -hmm. And we became inseparable throughout the week. When I got home, he said, I started the adoption process. And we found out that in the process, George has three siblings. Wow. And we're not going to break up the siblings. Sure. And I, I've adopted, our fifth child's adopted. And uh, I knew it was going to be expensive. I said, Don, how much is this going to cost? He said, oh, they're telling us seventy or $80,000. And I said, do you have any idea how you're going to raise that money? And he said, no. And I said, I think I got an idea. And so Don and I, we put together some friends, about 14 or 15 of us, and we all sent letters out to everyone we knew. And we said, would you sponsor me while I work on this widow's house? Mm -hmm. All the money I raise will go towards the cost of this adoption. So it's two separate things. We found a widow in Franklin. Uh, got all the supplies we needed donated by local merchants because everyone liked the idea. Right. And <laughs> when we spent the day working on Miss Lucille's house, and it was just an, it was an amazing day. It was so much fun. I think about 35 people showed up. And when it was all over, said and done, after you know a couple months, all the money came in, we had raised right around $70,000. Wow. Yeah, that's... What unheard I was of, yeah, that's unheard <laughs> of. And you, I, I don't want to give too much of the story away, but you know, you come from a, a unique background yourself. You lost mm -hmm. your own parents, mm -hmm. so this is a passion project for you. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when I was 12 years old, I lived on a farm in northeastern Iowa, mm -hmm. and there was five of us kids. One weekend, my mom and dad left to celebrate their 16th wedding anniversary, and us kids were kind of farmed out to different places. And I remember Saturday night being brought home, and um, you know, because mom and dad were coming home, and I would was dirty. I played in the barn all day that day, so I had to go in the basement and change. My other brother went in the front door. But I remember sitting in the basement, unlacing my boots, and my brother came down the basement stairs, and I looked up at him, and I said, are mom and dad home? And he looked at me, and he said, mom and dad are dead. Wow. Yeah. And I said, what? He said, mom and dad are dead. They were killed in a car accident an hour ago. 
and he turned around and walked upstairs. I mean, he had just hurt himself. He was just processing it. Yeah, I was say, how do you process that as a 12 year old? Well, I, the way I did that point, I hit that cement floor crying. Mm -hmm. It was just for the next 10, 15 minutes, just crying all alone on the basement floor, thinking about my mom and dad. And uh -huh. I mean, I know what it's like to be an orphan. I know what it's like to hear those words. I know what it's like to wonder what's gonna happen, who's gonna take care of us. Yeah. But I also know what it's like to be rescued because mm -hmm. three months before the accident, my mom and dad and my aunt and uncle changed their wills that if anything would happen to one of them, the other couple would take them. Mm. My aunt and uncle lived in a really nice suburb of Milwaukee called Brookfield. Mm. They had three kids of their own. They took all five of us. Amazing. <laughs> I, I know the story, I've heard it before and it still moves me. There, there's so much more I wanna ask you, including what happened with you and Don, how people can help. So stay tuned, we're gonna be right back to tell you more about Both Hands and the Vision Project coming up on July 12th. I'm talking with J.T. Olson, founder of Both Hands Ministry. J.T., you were just telling us about your almost unbelievable family story, how that led to creating this, this project with your friend Don, who kind of <laughs> shook you out of how you thought about fundraising. What, yeah. what happened after that first project? Well, that first project was so much fun. And about six months later, another friend of mine came up and said, I, I heard what you did with Don, would you help me? You've got some good friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I said, yeah, let's do it again, because it was so much fun. Yeah. And so about a year later from that first project, we ended up doing a second project. I think they, were, they need to raise about 13000 I think we raised about 12000 yeah. But it was an amazing day because, I mean, we, we put a new roof on this lady's house, which is not something that's typical. I no. mean, we just had a lot of good people say, we can do it, we can do it, you yeah. know, so. But I remember standing on that roof and looking out over her yard, and I counted 54 people. We transformed her front yard. We transformed her backyard. I mean, we put a new roof on her house. Um, and then I counted the cars. Mm -hmm. And I counted 19 cars on the street. And it took me back to the farm um, when I was 12. About mm -hmm. a month after the accident, my, my little sisters, who were three and five, moved in immediately with my aunt and uncle in okay. Milwaukee. Us three boys stayed on the farm to help my other uncle, my dad's brother, because uh, we had 400 acres and we had, wow. to, you know, we had chores and stuff. Right. So I was, we finished the school year out there. And uh, actually my dad's sister, who was a widow, came in and she did the cooking and cleaning. So that was who was taking care of us. But I remember getting off the bus in a beautiful April day. And our bus stops about a half mile from the house. Mm -hmm. It's on a hill, you can see a lot of the farm. I got off and looked in the fields and there were all our neighbors mm. with their tractors and their plows and their planters and they were planting our, our crops. It was, it was all my dad's buddies taking sure. care of their buddy's kids. Yeah. And when I stood on that roof and I counted mm -hmm. 19 cars, I thought, man, this is, this is living. That's, and that's what people are supposed to do. Yeah, and, and that night my wife and I went out to eat to kind of celebrate that project for Bill and Lisa and, and uh, whew, that's when I told her, I said, I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, she, her, one of her comments was, I, I haven't seen you this alive in several years. You know, this is, this is obviously what gets yeah. you going. And, and I was just gonna say, I mean, I remember from the last project I was at, what's amazing because you're literally going out in the community, it is, it's, it's droves of people showing up, yeah. all colors, all walks <laughs> of life. And I think what amazes me is the people, the neighbors that show up, that first are maybe just curious about what's going on and then pick up a hammer or pick, I mean, I was, someone asked me to do something last time, I'm like, I can't do that, but I can organize. And I got to organize someone's shed. I mean, it's just, everyone has a place there. Yeah. And it's just, I mean, can you share some of the numbers of, of what you've been able well, to do? Well, yeah, the good news is well, about, about three months after that fateful dinner, yeah. August of 2008, we started both hands. We made it through September of 08 when the right, recession the crash, hit. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how you start a nonprofit at that point, but <laughs> you did, God did, God did it. <laughs> Thank you, God. And, and uh, but now we've done, this is my favorite part. Yeah. We've done 1,087 <gasps> projects in 44 states. Wow. 1,190 widows have been served. 1,340 kids are no longer orphans. Wow. And we've raised $13.7 million for families to use for adoptions. It's amazing. It's and 100% of that money goes to the cause. We don't take anything out right. for our operations. Right. 
it's, it, I can't say enough good things about both hands, and what I love about it is that you're helping widows and orphans, right? All the money is going to that, but my kids can help. Anyone can help. Yeah. There's, a, there's a place for anyone. There's, you've gotten a big event coming up, big really, uh, your, your vision project yeah. you know, that you do once a year. Please tell people about that and how they can participate. Well, we don't take any money out. When we help a family do a project, we take nothing out for our operations, like a typical nonprofit would have to do. I just decided early on we're going to do this a little differently. Yeah. And so uh, we raise our money on the side. Now, we have a lot of monthly donors who love what we do, and they say, just keep doing it, JT. We have some very generous fans at Christmas time. But one of the main things we do is we do a big project every year. Yeah. I mean, at the board meeting, when we decided this, we said, well, do we do a banquet? Do we do a concert? And we said, why don't we just do a both hands project? That's you know? right. And so every year we have a big one, anywhere between 100 and 150 people show up. Yeah. You know, a bunch of people send letters out beforehand to raise funds, to have people sponsor right, them. Right. Uh, last year we served three widows and one widower on the same street. This year we're working in the hard bargain area of Franklin. <laughs> and it's just, I think there's 10 sites we're working Amazing. on that we're going to be making an impact and we got 100 to 150 people. Amazing. We're going to tell people how they can be a part of it, whether you want to donate, show up, get your hands on, right? Go to <laughs> bothhands.org. July 12th is a vision project. JT, thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks it's for having me. Always good to have you. Hope we see you on July 12th. Before I go, I need you to ask yourself, does it apply to you? Let's face it, not everything applies to everybody. A deal isn't a good deal if it's not something you need. Even the latest diet trend that seems to be working for everyone else might not agree with your body type. But for some reason, we tend to give more weight to the popular answer rather than the personalized one. Likewise, when we hear negative comments, we can internalize them, even if they weren't meant for us. Colossians 3.2 offers a unique insight in the message translation by saying, don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorb with the things right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what's going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. It's not wrong to want to take care of ourselves. In fact, it's supremely important to attend to your own physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual health. However, I get concerned when I find myself or others focusing on a quick fix or fad simply because it worked for someone else and failing to consider if it even aligns with what we know about ourself, our minds, and our bodies. We must first prioritize what we know is right and true and then measure all other words and opportunities up against that truth. So I'm telling you right now to ask yourself one very simple question the next time you're pondering whether to buy something, try something, or adopt something new in your life. Does it apply to you? One thing I can guarantee is that the information we shared and the organizations we introduced you to today do apply to you. And my hope is that you've been inspired by at least one person, place, or cause after watching today's show and find a way to take action today. As always, I'm grateful to my sponsors, Lily Pulitzer of Green Hills for providing the perfect summer maxi dress, to Kendra Scott of Green Hills for my jewelry, and to Soundwaves at Opryland for being the ultimate Nashville summer getaway. I hope you have a great day. Make sure you make it great, and do not wait to tell someone you love how you feel about them. Bye, friends.